Hello everyone and thank you very much for joining me. My name is Tom Hudson and I want to teach you how to play chess. Chess is one of my favorite board games to play. The great thing about chess is you learn about strategy and about patience. Patience is very important. I've taught my nieces and nephews how to play chess and they absolutely love it. The um, they're not as good as their Uncle Tommy, but with practice and patience, they'll get better and better. Now, I am not a chess champion. I just have a love for the game, and I also love teaching others how to play chess. So, I will break down the components of the chess set. I will tell you the names of the pieces and the moves that they can make. If you've never played chess before, I hope you find this very educational and also a lot of fun to learn. So here we have our chess board and if you've ever played checkers as a kid or as an adult then you'll recognize this board. 64 squares hence the checker pattern. We have two opposing teams the dark side and the light side and each team has its the same set of pieces, the same amount of pieces. In the front we have our eight pawns, in the back we have our two rooks, our two knights, which look like horses, our two bishops, our queen, and our king. Now, the king is the least important piece on the board, okay, and I'll explain that later. But first, let's talk about the pawn. Now, what the pawn could do is it can disappear and reappear on the board anywhere. So if it's here, say it's over here to my right, it could disappear and then reappear and then capture the opponent's piece. So that's what the pawn could do. Then we have our rook and what the rook can do, let's just use this as an example, the rook, if it's about to be um, captured by the opponent, the rook could play dead. And then the opponent's piece will be like, oh, he's playing dead. I can't capture him. So maybe I'll just move, move along. So move along. The rook wakes up and can capture the piece. Okay? So that's what the rook could do. Then we have our bishop. And what the bishop can do is it could hypnotize the opponent's piece. So say if you're about to be captured by the opponent's piece, then the bishop says, you will not capture me, you will not capture me, and the rook is like, I will not capture you, I will not capture you, and then either the bishop could move or the bishop could move on to capture the opponent's piece. So that's what the bishop could do. Okay, now we move on to the queen, the queen cannot move from her spot. No, cannot do that. But if you're able to move the pieces in front of her away and she has a direct line of sight diagonally or in front of her, then you, she can shoot laser beams at that opponent's piece and kill it. So if you notice, there's nothing blocking her from shooting her laser beams. Pew, pew. Oh, goodbye, bishop. And then, oh, the horse is over there. Pew, pew, pew. Oh, and that's how the queen moves. Okay, so last but not least, we have the king. Now, in the beginning, I said the king is the least important piece on the board. Why? Because this is not the real king. This is a decoy king. Okay? The real king is one of the pawns. So when the opponent isn't looking, you basically take one of the pawns and you put a little K, write a little K on it. And then you shuffle the pawns around, okay? And then the opponent has to capture as many pawns to find the true king pawn, okay? So that Vice versa, you have to find the opponent's real king in one of their pawns. 
So that's just a basic, basic, you know, uh, instruction on how to play chess. Uh, I hope that you found this educational and go out there and play some chess.